Welcome back to Monroe's Cornerback with another reaction. Today we got uh, Thomas Saul and Jordan Peterson must watch. Uh, let's get into it, man. Hey, man, we 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 back in uh, Stay Curious University over here. <laughs> we back at Stay Curious University over here. All right. Uh, so let's get into it, man. Roll to 20K, man. If you enjoy this reaction, before you leave, all I ask is for a like for the algorithm and to subscribe for the uh, channel growth, all right? All right, let's get into it. You may not realize it, but you are currently funding some dangerous people. They are indoctrinating young minds throughout the West with their resentment-ridden ideology. They have made it their life's mission to undermine Western civilization itself, which they regard as corrupt, oppressive, and patriarchal. If you're a taxpayer or paying for your kid's liberal arts degree, you're underwriting this gang of nihilists. You're supporting ideologues who claim that all truth is subjective, that all sex differences are socially con So there's all of us. Because <laughs> we got to pay them, right? liberal arts degree, you're underwriting this gang of nihilists. You're supporting ideologues who claim that all truth is subjective, that all sex differences are socially constructed, and that Western truth is a itself, which they regard as corrupt, oppressive, and patriarchal. If you're a taxpayer or paying for your kid's liberal arts degree, you're underwriting this gang of nihilists. You're supporting ideologues who claim that all truth is subjective, that all sex differences are socially constructed, and that Western imperialism is the sole source of all third world problems. They are the postmodernists. I can't stand, I, can't, I just want to touch on that real quick. Like, how do people say the truth is subjective and, instead of objective? The truth, the truth is objective. There's no his truth, her truth, my truth. There's the truth, and that's it. It's evidence and facts. Evidence and facts, man. Come on, man. Well, I'm... Well, my, my truth, no. It's the truth. That's it. The sole source of all third world problems. That all truth is subjective. That all sex differences are socially constructed and that Western imperialism is the sole source of all third world problems. They are the postmodernists pushing progressive activism at a college near you. They produce the mobs that violently shut down campus speakers, the language police who enshrine into law use of fabricated gender pronouns, mm. and the deans whose language livelihoods police. depend on madly rooting out discrimination where little or none exists. Their thinking took hold in Western universities in the 60s and 70s when the true believers of the radical left became the professors of today. And now we rack up education-related debt, not so that our children learn to think critically, write clearly, or speak properly, but so they can model their mentor's destructive agenda. To understand and oppose the postmodernists, oh. the ideas by which they orient themselves must oh. be clearly to understand properly, not so that our children learn in the 70s, when the true believers of the radical left became the professors of today. And now we rack up education-related debt, not so that our children learn to think critically, write clearly, or speak properly, but so they can model their mentor's destructive agenda. To under so they can model their mentor's destructive agenda. Not for them to think critically, speak clearly, you know what I'm saying? But to model their mental destructive agenda. You know what I'm saying? That's why we, I, I, the video before this I just did, uh, the Larry Larry Elder with the Denzel Washington joint. Uh, Y'all watched that too, it's a good one. You know what I'm like Denzel was saying, it starts, it starts at home, all right? So when we send our kids off to school, we have to we have to do our best as parents. We have to do our best to make sure we're raising them as critical thinkers. Like like their teachers are these people like you, you never know what these 
teachers' agendas are. And so they're going to teach their class based on their agenda. And so we're getting a lot of this now. It's, we're getting a lot of this now in these schools. These teachers are teaching. They're not just teaching from the curriculum what they're supposed to be teaching. They're teaching, especially in college and stuff, they're teaching based on their agenda, what they believe in, and they're pushing their beliefs on you. And they're the teacher. They're the know-all, you know what I'm saying? So they're following behind their lead. Got to stay curious. We got to question everything, even the teachers. Even the teachers. Got to do our fact-checking and not fall victim into other people's beliefs. Have to be able to f find your way and, and, and just stay curious, man. Understand and oppose the post can model the children learn to think critically, write clearly, or speak properly, but so they can model their mentor's destructive agenda. To understand and oppose the postmodernists, the ideas by which they orient themselves must be clearly identified. First is their new unholy trinity of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diversity is defined not by opinion, but by race, ethnicity, or sexual identity. Equity is no longer the laudable goal of equality of opportunity, but the insistence on equality of outcome. And inclusion is the use of identity-based quotas to attain this misconceived state of equity. All the classic rights of the West um, are to be considered secondary to these new values. Quality of, I'm, I'm all for a quality of opportunity. Just give me a fair playing field. I'm good. Because I'm going to work hard. I'm going to bust my ass. I'm going to be disciplined. And I'm going to be consistent to the point where I'm going to get that top spot. I'm for equality of opportunity. Just give me the same opportunity everybody else got. And watch me bust everybody. You know what I'm saying? Watch, 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 watch me, watch, watch me, watch me grow. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna get mine. All I need is a fair playing field. That's it. I just want my fair shake. That's it. That's it. Yes. Take, for example, freedom of speech, the very pillar of democracy. The postmodernists refuse to believe that people of goodwill can exchange ideas and reach consensus. Their world is instead a Hobbesian nightmare of identity groups warring for power. They don't see ideas that run contrary to their ideology as simply incorrect. They see them as integral to the oppressive system they wish to supplant and consider it a moral obligation to stifle and constrain their expression. Right. Second, freedom, you know what I'm saying? Like freedom of speech is drowning in council culture. Freedom of speech is drowning in council culture. Like you said, they got these identity wars going on with, with different groups. Every time you look up, it's a different freaking war going on with identities and shit, man. Is rejection of the free market of the if, if you don't agree to it then you you know what i'm saying if you don't agree to it then you're a hater and then you're you know what i'm saying you're not for you're not for this or you're not for that man and then they want to cancel you because you're not for this and you're not for that man <laughs> freedom of speech is just really drowning in council culture man and people Bend the knee because they scared to get canceled. The very idea that free voluntary trading benefits everyone. They won't acknowledge that capitalism has lifted up hundreds of millions of people so they can, for the first time in history, afford food, shelter, clothing, transportation, even entertainment and travel. Those classified as poor in the U.S. and increasingly everywhere else are able to meet their basic needs. Meanwhile, in once prosperous Venezuela, until recently the poster child of the campus radicals, the middle class lines up for toilet paper. Third and what? finally are the politics. Really? Wow. That's crazy. 
I did not know it was like that over there. ...of identity. Postmodernists don't believe paper. Third and finally are the politics of identity. Postmodernists don't believe in individuals. You're an exemplar of your race, sex, or sexual preference. You're also either a victim or an oppressor. No wrong can be done by anyone in the former... Yep, a victim or a oppressor, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no middle ground. It's just like we're not individuals out here. These labels, man. These labels, man, we can't. Gotta stop letting these labels dictate how we feel about each other, yo. Or just how we feel about yourself. You can't you, you, you stop letting people label us. You're also either a victim or an oppressor. No wrong can be done by anyone in the former group, and no good by the latter. Such ideas of victimization do nothing but justify the use of power and engender intergroup conflict. Are we becoming a nation of intellectuals? I hadn't thought of that. It would be, it's, it's, it's a chilling thought because we, we're becoming a nation of people who are propagandized from elementary school right on through to the graduate school in a certain vision of the world. And only the ones who, for one reason or another, uh, either experience or insight or whatever, leads them to say, wait a minute. Only those are the ones that we have to depend on. This is an excerpt taken from the book Intellectuals and Society by Dr. Thomas Sowell. He saw this a long time ago. Back in the 18th century, William Godwin articulated this argument when he said, the next generation will not have so many prejudices to subdue. Children, according to Godwin, are a sort of raw material put into our hands. Their minds are like a sheet of white paper. At the same time, they are oppressed by their parents and must go through, according to him, 20 years of bondage before they receive the scanty portion of liberty which the government of my country happens to concede to its adult subjects. William Godwin's notion that the young are a sort of raw material put into our hands remains, after two centuries, a powerful temptation to classroom indoctrination in schools and colleges. In the early 20th century, Woodrow classroom material put into adult subjects. William Godwin's notion that the young are a sort of raw material put into our hands remains, after two centuries, a powerful temptation to classroom indoctrination in schools and colleges. In the early 20th century, Woodrow Wilson wrote of his years as an academic administrator when he felt, I should like to make the young gentlemen of the rising generation, as unlike their fathers as possible. This indoctrination can start as early as elementary school, where students are encouraged or required to write about controversial issues, sometimes in letters to public officials. More yeah, I don't agree with that, you know what I'm saying? Like bringing the politics in the school and stuff like that you know what i mean like like what what are they doing with this information you know what i'm saying like how is this helping anything just 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 raise them to be teach them how to be critical thinkers you know what i'm saying teach them how to go find the truth teach them how to do proper research It's like they're forcing all kind of agendas on these kids now. And, and to go back and touch on what he was saying too, that that that's some real spell right there about they're like a blank sheet of paper, and we fill them we 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 fill them up with with our ideas of how life is. We <laughs> we mold these kids, and we got them for we got them from eighteen years. We got them for 18 years before we let them go. By law, <laughs> we got them. They're, they're trapped with the with, with the parents. Uh, they're trapped with the parents uh, who molds who molds them completely. Their beliefs, what they believe, and it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to. That's why a lot of people really truly just start finding themselves after high school because you've been under c constant supervision your whole life your whole life you at home you know what i'm saying you're raised on 
how your parents raised you, which was probably how their parents raised them, right? Uh, then you, you got the school system. The school system is also raising your kids because they're also teaching your kids. They're teaching your kids and you have, as parents, as parents, we uh, we also got to double check on what they're learning and correct the schools when they're wrong or correct. I, I tell my kids all the time, hey, you got anything to ask me, ask me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to know what you're learning. I want to know what they're teaching you. Because a lot of this stuff is, is, is not right for them to be teaching them right now. They're very impressionable. So what you, you know what I'm saying? They're going to think your word is bond. But, yeah, we got to, we got to, we got to teach these, teach these kids the right things, man. Got to raise them right. They were raise them to think for their own. But, yeah, they're, they're with us for a long time, like, you only started coming to your own after high school because you're you're free. You get to you get to do what you want. Like I was raised in the church. I started questioning the church. I started really just digging into, you know what I'm saying, digging into the world. You know what I mean? I had stopped going and started just researching everything. I still believe in God, but you know, my, my parents were very church going are very church going people. So, gotta gotta develop your own uh, ideas and just find your own way in life, man. And stay researching, man. More fundamentally, the indoctrination process habituates them to taking sides on weighty and complex issues after hearing just one side of those issues. Moreover, they are habituated to venting their emotions, instead of analyzing conflicting evidence and dissecting conflicting arguments. Mm -hmm. In short, they are led to prepackaged conclusions, instead of being equipped with the intellectual tools to reach their own conclusions, including prepackaged conclusions. Oh my god, that is a bar. Yeah. They got prepackaged conclusions from what they're learning. From what they're being taught. Including conclusions different from those of their teachers. In many colleges and universities, whole academic departments are devoted to particular prepackaged conclusions, whether on race, the environment, or other subjects, under such names as black, women's, or environmental studies. Few, if any, of these studies include conflicting visions and conflicting evidence, as educational rather than ideological criteria might require. One of the remarkable self-indulgences of contemporary educators in the public schools has been the introduction into classrooms of programs which systematically undermine moral principles that have come down over the centuries, and which children have been taught by their parents. Mm. These programs have usually been developed by intellectuals outside the field of education, extensively marketed by both commercial firms and non-profit organizations, and are often eagerly embraced by educators who have been taught in schools of education that their role is to be that of agents of social change, not simply transmitters of a heritage of knowledge. These programs have a remarkable variety of names and ostensible goals, one of the earliest names being values clarification, though other names have proliferated after parents and others discovered what values clarification really meant in practice and raised objections. The phrase values clarification is very misleading. When parents tell their children not to steal or lie, or engage in violence, there is no ambiguity as to what they mean. Ambiguity is introduced by programs which confront students with carefully crafted moral dilemmas, such as a situation where a ship is sinking and there are more people than the lifeboats can hold, so that decisions have to be made as to who is to be left to drown, perhaps beaten off when they try to climb out of the water onto a lifeboat that is already so full that it will capsize if another person climbs in. Because received moral principles do not always apply, the implication is that each individual should develop his or her own situational ethics to replace traditional morality, not only where traditional moral principles fail but in the vast range of more ordinary situations where there are no such dilemmas as those in contrived examples. If such exercises seem remote from the purposes of a public school education, they are not remote from the philosophy introduced into education by John Dewey a century ago, 
and promoted by schools of education to the present day. Nor were they remote from the thinking by Woodrow Wilson. Like so much in the vision of the anointed, this view of education exalts those who believe in it, and so it is not simply a set of testable hypotheses about social events. Also like other aspects of that vision, there is no price to be paid by its promoters for being wrong, however large a price ends up being paid by individual students or by society at large. Values clarification has been just one of a wide range of high-sounding names for classroom programs to reshape the attitudes and consciousness of the younger generation. Other names have included effective education, decision-making, quest, sex education, and many other imaginative titles. Such titles are often simply flags of convenience, under which schools set sail on an exciting voyage in an uncharted sea of social experimentation in the reshaping of young people's beliefs and attitudes. The ever-changing names for these programs reflect the need for concealment or misdirection since few parents want to be told that schools are out to undo what the parents have taught their children or to mold those children to be what third parties want them to be. To help spread Thomas Sowell's message around the world, please consider subscribing. Hey, he said it perfectly. They're reshaping... <laughs> they're reshaping young kids beliefs and attitudes that sums it up that's that's what it's all about that's the mission that's the mission out there right now that's the mission to reshape these young kids beliefs and attitudes because you could you can you you can um you can raise them right but when they go to school, they're going to reshape them to the agenda. All right? So, moral of the story. <laughs> moral of the story, man. Stay on your stay on your kids, yo. Stay on your kids. Make sure make sure you know what they learning. Make sure you know what they teaching. Cuz you know, we could petition and everything and do all that uh, against the schools uh, for what they teaching and stuff like that. But you know, that's a long process, man. It starts at home and it ends at home. All right? They go to school, they got to come back home. Make sure when they come back home, if they getting feed BS, we there to correct it and let them know that ain't it. All right? Taking into consideration, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, do your own research on things. Don't believe them, because they might have their own agenda. That's just what it is. That was that was that was a dope that was a dope uh, watch right there. I love me. See, I this, this was a good great combination. Good. Thomas Saul and Jordan Peterson. Okay, that, this was amazing. All right, so put it in the comments uh, what you want me to react to next, and I'm going to get to it. If you enjoyed this reaction, I, all I ask for is the like for the algorithm and the subscribe, for, subscribe to the channel for the growth. Uh, I'm on the road to 20K, man. On the road to 20K. We, hey, let's get it, baby. All right. Appreciate y'all tuning in to Stay Curious University. <laughs> another day. Another day at Stay Curious University. Let's get it. Thank you.